Hello, and welcome to ECMATH. Today, we are going to talk about graph transformations of all kinds. My plan today is basically to talk for about 20 minutes, and, and during that time, do as many different graphs as I can, straight examples, all the theories in the last two videos. This is just going to be graphs. Our first graph is going to be 2 square root negative x minus 1. Uh, first move I'm going to make is factor the inside so it looks like this. And that's going to tell me the three transformations are going to happen, and it's going to tell me the order in which they will happen. Uh, first, I'm going to do the input transformations. And when I do the input transformations, I do them in reverse order of operation. So first, it's going to be a reflection over the y-axis. Then it's going to be the plus one. That's going to be a shift one unit to the left, uh, since we're doing, again, opposite operations. And then we'll look at this last output transformation. It's going to be a vertical stretch. So I'm just going to go ahead and start drawing the parent and then carry out those transformation in the transformations in the order I've described. Uh, and here we go. And that's our graph. Here it is with this page color switch back in case that last one was hard to read. All right, we're gonna go on to the next graph. All right, let's try uh, negative one half quantity x plus four squared. Uh, so first let's list the transformations. There's only a single input transformation, so I'm gonna list that one first. This is going to be, I'll list it over here, a, a horizontal shift. Uh, four units to the left, then we're going to have a one-half, so it's going to be a vertical shrink by factor one-half, and third thing is going to be a uh, vertical reflection uh, over the x-axis. All right, here we go again. There we go. Uh, I find it a lot easier when I know I'm gonna do a vertical shrink of some sort uh, to make sure I have enough vertical points that are high up so that when I shrink them down, I'll have values on the graph. If I stick to just this uh, over one, up one each time, that shrinks down to one half. It's just hard to plot. Uh, but if you go over to four, that gives you enough data, um, enough points to kind of work with. You could even go out to three comma nine if you wanted to on the parent, three 
right? Oh, all the way up here, kind of three comma nine. I know that's not exactly nine, uh, but that will give you a, even another point to shrink down if you wanted to have it. Here we go, something with the dreaded quadruple transformation. I've got one, two, three, four separate things going on uh, that we're all gonna graph in one. First, factor the inside, two, x minus three cubed. If you wanted a further explanation of why I'm factoring the inside like this, I'm gonna send you back to my video on input transformations where I show you uh, what happens if you don't factor the inside. It's actually perfectly doable, uh, but you gotta be a little smarter about it. If you factor the inside and then follow the transformations in the order I'm giving you, it's always gonna work. Uh, so then we're gonna do the input transformations first. It's gonna be a vertical, nope, horizontal shrink by factor two. It's gonna be a uh, shift uh, right three units. That's what factoring the inside reveals is the actual size of the shift. Um, if you think about the shift as six, you have to think about sh uh, shrinking the shift, which is why we don't do it that way. Then we're gonna go to the outside. We're going to reflect over X and we're going to shrink uh, vertically by one half. So we have two types of shrinks here. We first have a horizontal shrink by a factor of two and a vertical shrink by a factor. We're gonna say factor of two on that one as well. Um, with the vertical shrink, I think it's fair to say factor of one half or factor of two. I know shrink by one half kind of feels like a double negative, right? You're shrinking by a fraction that should be maybe getting larger. Um, but I know our book just says factor of one half and I think that's fine. Um, I, I'm not gonna be super picky about how you describe the factor. Um, we're gonna shrink this thing vertically. All right, so these two shrinks are, I think, already gonna, just anticipating the graph, gonna interact in kind of a weird way. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens. All right, so I'm gonna start just like before by graphing the parent. I'm gonna graph over to two and eight, two, four, six, and eight on the parent, because I feel like with this, uh, these shrinking things that are gonna happen, I better have some extra points to work with. I'm not gonna do the negative eight. Uh, instead, I'm gonna just focus on really locking in what's going on in the positive direction. And then um, I will mirror it. Missed my points there. Okay, so horizontal shrink uh, is what I've said I'm gonna do first. And that means that I'm gonna take all of the x values, so 2, 8 is going to become 1, 8. 1, 1 is going to become 1 half 1, etc. Boom, boom. Let's graph to get a lot skinnier. Then we'll shift it right three units. Now I'm gonna take this graph and reflect it over X. I know that the relationship between these points and the points down here are symmetric. It has that odd symmetry. So even though I couldn't see the point down here, uh, I didn't graph it all the way down at negative eight down here. Is that negative eight, two, four, six? Actually down here, even though I didn't graph that, I still knew that it was gonna reflect up to there because of that symmetry. Now I'm gonna shrink this vertically by a factor of two. I'm gonna use my nice gold pen for this. And 
And that's our result uh, over in the gold there. So we've had a graph that's been shrunk in two directions. The two shrinks almost cancel each other out because um, one is sort of squishing it together vertically and one is pushing it down vertically. Um, so you could say that they kind of go through uh, similar points to almost just a reflection of the parent. Um, but it does have different points it goes through. I tried really carefully to track the actual paths of like two specific points that, that it went through. Um, and you know this is what has happened to them. Um, and you'll notice that it's not, those strings don't exactly cancel each other out. If they did, uh, then this would go through these points over here, right? One over and one up uh, from the center. And they don't, it actually goes through the points one half over and one half down from the new center of the graph. Uh, so that says that we've shrunken it both horizontally and vertically uh, without changing the shape. So that was pretty tricky to draw. Cubics especially, um, hard to draw. Really try to get as many points as you can fit on the graph, on the graph, I think is the most helpful thing for me when I do these. I would be amiss if we didn't do a function that is not defined by one of our typical parent equations and is instead just defined by a given graph. So the only things, unlike on our parents, where we're able to kind of rely on knowing the shape of the parent, this is the shape of the parent. It's kind of a weird little hilly mountainy bit. So the only points that we're going to be able to rely on are the specific dots, one, two, three, four, five of them in the parent. And we're going to be transforming every single one of these dots every time. I'm going to actually add a dot here that you can always think about, which is that little y-intercept dot. So maybe six little dots on the parent uh, that are going to be really important dots to have. So let's take a look at this transformation that I'm asking you to do. It is a quadruple transformation again, and it's especially difficult because I have not one, not two, but three transformations to the inputs of this function. So uh, here's what this is gonna look like. So first thing I wanna do is just like before, I'm gonna factor the inside. So this is really f of negative one half, parentheses x minus two plus one. So ignoring the parent for just a second, let's make the list of transformations. First, the negative, uh, we'll do the one half, is a vertical, nope, horizontal uh, stretch by a factor of two. Two, the negative is a reflection over the y axis. Not the x-axis, because it's a negative inside the function, so that's going to take the x values and reflect them over the y-axis. Three, it's going to be a shift uh, two units to the right. And number four, it's going to be a shift one unit up. Uh, so one nice thing about this is we're going to get all of the stretching and reflecting over first, and then we're just going to do our shift. I might actually do this shift uh, two over one up all in one once we identify our points. So the two most challenging transformations are going to be those two right here. So let's do it. First, I go to this horizontal stretch. I'm going to need a lot of space on my graph. In fact, I'm going to pause and move the graph down slightly. Okay, so I've got the graph. Uh, I have horizontal stretch by a factor two, what I'm going to do is take all of the x coordinates and double them. So this point, we'll start on the uh, far left, is at one, two, three, four. That's going to go all the way out to negative one, two, three, negative eight. I'm going to take this value here that was at minus one, and it becomes a value that lives over at minus two. This value was that was at minus two now is going to live at minus four. Zero stays at zero. That's convenient. I'm going to go ahead and draw the, whoa there, uh, draw that stretch as we go. So I got the first half of the stretch done. Now I'm going to do the second half of the stretch. This point doubles over to two. This point was at three. That's going to be over at six. So we'll do the second half of the stretch. Close enough. I know my slope's a little wonky there, but I've got the points, so it doesn't really matter that my slopes are wonky. Uh, what did I say I was going to do now? Now I'm going to take that whole monstrosity, all those points, and reflect everything over that y axis. So remember, not the x axis reflection, 
with the y-axis reflection. So now I'm going to take each point that I had, move it over. So this point goes to here. This point goes to here. That was easy. This point goes to here. This point at negative 8 goes all the way over to positive 8, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This point down here is 6 over, so 6 over down like this. And let's see if I can connect these successfully. Mm -hmm. Make my marker a little darker so we can really see which is the newest transformation. So part of the graph was not reflected, uh, or was reflected but didn't really change, which was this flat bit up at the top. Um, but a lot of the graph did change, right? We, we moved a little hook, hooky bit, from uh, the left side over to the right side. Now I'm going to take this whole monster, shift it two units to the right. So I'm going to do that in green. I'm going to make my marker bigger again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take this whole graph again. I'm going to use my nice little uh, red marble pen shift everything. I'm going to do these two in one step. Just go two units over and one unit up in the same move. I'm doing this to the green graph. So And that would be our child where we label it f of negative one half x minus two plus one. So that was kind of a monster. Uh, hopefully it's able to, you're able to kind of decode the sequence of transformations that you had. Um, I do encourage you guys to draw multiple transformations. This is really hard to figure out without uh, thinking about the sequence of transformations. We're gonna end the day with one more graph. I felt like we should do a cube root uh, just because that's like kind of such a tricky function. Uh, so we're going to do this one cube root, negative cube root of 3x minus 3, quantity plus 1. First thing I'll do, factor the inside again. So this is 3 parentheses x minus 3 uh, plus 1. That's wrong. x minus 1. You can think about multiplying these back in to if you want to double check if you factor things correctly. Sequence of transformations. First, I think about the 3. That's going to be a horizontal shrink by factor three. Then uh, shift one unit to the right. Then it's going to be a reflection over the x-axis. Since it's a negative outside, it's a reflection over x. And then it's going to shift one unit up. Here we go. Um, so the one I really want to talk about is this horizontal shrink factor of 3 with the cube root. Uh, I'm going to graph the parent function first. So cube root goes through um, the point 2, or uh, 8, 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8. And I don't can't fit it on the screen, but I know that the cube root goes through the point uh, 27 comma 3 and I'm gonna use that when I do my horizontal shrink uh, so here's the parent again I'm kind of focusing on the positive numbers just and again, I'm gonna use symmetry on the negative numbers uh, that's, that's an okay thing to do it saves you some energy and time while you're plotting although I do encourage you to be thorough and not take shortcuts as well. So I'll go ahead and plot that minus 8 as well uh, so that I'm not taking shortcuts. Now I'm going to do that horizontal shrink. And I notice that this point now goes to one third. This is really hard to graph. I'll go ahead and do the negative version as well, right? So I can kind of see what my graph is going to look like coming through zero here. 
going through one third. Uh, but just fractions are so hard. So let's see, this point is gonna go to eight thirds, uh, which is about uh, six and two thirds. Is that true? Sorry, that's about two and two thirds. That's uh, a little better work with the mixed numbers. So that's, that's gonna be right around here. And here, one, two and two thirds. And then I'm actually gonna be able to now get the point 27.3 on my graph because when I take the x value here and divide it by three, that's gonna come to the point nine comma three, which does actually fit on my graph right there. So now I'm gonna to try to connect these points with that nice smooth cube root curve. I should be able to get that point nine, uh, negative nine comma negative three on the graph as well now. So there's my curve. Still a little messy. I'm not gonna worry about getting the line super perfect until I'm really doing my uh, total end function. Uh, now I'm just gonna do these, uh, this shift reflection and um, shift. Now I wanna show you actually with this graph, I'm gonna share with you a pretty cool strategy. Um, we've done our shrink, that's actually the hardest one. Uh, if you think about the transformations, if we move, change the order, and do this shift at the end, or switch the order with the x-axis reflection, it's not actually gonna change anything. And that's gonna let me do a little shortcut, and I'm sure you guys love shortcuts. That will let me combine these and shift over one and up one in one step. And since this graph is gonna become really messy really fast, um, if you wanna do that, I think that's totally okay. So I'm actually gonna move the reflection over X to happen first. Uh, now, if you're not comfortable reordering the transformations, if you're kind of thinking something strange might happen, then don't do this. Um, but I know that reflecting over the X axis is not gonna change the actions of the shifting, right? It's uh, nothing in the shift is gonna happen here. As long as I like do, as long as I'm doing the reflection over X before I do the shift up, at least, um, nothing's gonna change. So I can change the order of these two no problem. Um, yeah. All right. So here we go. Hmm. Reflect over X, not Y. I almost reflected over Y. So there's my reflection over X. Now I'm gonna do exactly like I said, I'm gonna combine these shifts and go over one and up one all in one step. Uh, and to do this one, finally, I will use my nice gold pen, because gold is festive. You go over one and up one, over one and up one, over one and up one, finally that zero point moves, over one and up one, and over one and up one. We're gonna call that close enough. I got a little little shady in the middle, but you know what? I had my points plotted. And so even if I was a little shady with the shape of my curve, if you zoom out, it doesn't even look that bad. Uh, as long as you can see those specific points, your intent is clear. Uh, so this is how I would describe this shift, um, reflection uh, and shrink transformation. So to close today, uh, this went a little long, 25 minutes instead of uh, 20 minutes, but I thought it was important to do all these functions. I hope you've had an enjoyed a good time watching these. Practice on your own. Practice, practice, practice makes perfect. Don't shy away from these hard transformations. If you ever do a hard transformation and you want me to check your work, I'm happy to. Just take a picture, uh, email it my way. Um, you know, practice, practice makes perfect. You're really going to get better as you go. Uh, you've been watching Ekmath. Have a good day.